a generational crisis like some kind of all-out civil war, maybe World War III, seems like it could be as good a reason as any to stack up a little bit of gold. So I'm not into prophecies and don't take that as a religious comment. I'm talking about the kinds of things that we see in the modern world, like an American prophecy given in The Fourth Turning. It's a book by Neil Howe. That book tells of 80 year cycles broken down into four turnings that last somewhere around 20 years each. Now, if this sounds familiar, the author contributed to a similar book released in 1997. In the new book that was released last July, we are square in the middle of what the book refers to as the crisis turning. Now, this turn started around 2008, and it's going to last until, well, it's going to last until whenever the mess ends. Before we get back to it, if you're looking for precious metals, hit up SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for spot. That's sdbullion.com slash new. So what's the crisis we're talking about here? Well, the American prophecy given in the fourth turning is something like World War III or a new American Civil War, something very significant. So not a small mess, a big one. Now, the book uses patterns from the past 500 years, but if you were to just look at the last 160, well, the American Civil War started in 1861. It lasted until 1865. World War II was 80 years later from 1939 to 1945, and 80 years after that, well, that would be today. So let's de-escalate this just a little bit, not look at it as a prophecy, and just consider the given situation as one possible bad situation, one that you could plan against. Now, what would that look like? Well, in terms of financial implications, how we might plan to limit that kind of impact, it's pretty hard to say, but the book talks about an American Civil War or World War III, and if we stick with the spirit of the book, we can look at past events to use as a pattern. And one thing that came out of the American Civil War is the greenback. Now, I don't have greenbacks to use as prop, but I do have goldbacks. These are a little bit prettier. In 1861, the first greenbacks were issued with values relative to gold, and they could be redeemed on demand for the official currency at the time, which, of course, was gold and silver coins. Now, greenbacks were new as of the Civil War. They were different than the banknotes, different than the treasury notes that preceded them. It didn't take long to figure out that the demand notes were not going to be able to cover the expenses. So in 1862, United States notes were issued as unbacked paper currency. Now, these were still printed by the government. They were still using the green ink, and they were still given values relative to the official currency. But that redemption for gold was suspended. So the greenbacks were a complete break from the reality of money supply at the time. Now, this is just the short version because I'm a product of the public school system, but you get where this is going the Civil War gave us what is now the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar provided a new model for even greater inflation. Okay, so that's enough of the partial history. What I'm getting at is the idea that sometimes change happens really slowly and then all at once. And since we're talking about money here, that's one of those things. And a large-scale war would be one of those times. Now, war or not, I might even admit that this is just adding a reason to what I'm already sold on doing. I think it makes sense to have more than one form of savings. Two is one, one is none, all of that. Now, I don't even think two is enough, though. I want to cover as many bases as possible and do it in a way that my plan B or my plan C still leaves room for the original plan A. I'll put that in real terms. What that means is just having savings to cover expenses, some in the bank, some on hand. Plan A is about limiting debt and then having the dollars to pay the bills. Plan B, that would be my position in gold. Plan C, I mean, if we're breaking things into separate plans, plan C would be having some silver, maybe a little bit of crypto, and really a lot of other things with obvious value, or at least obvious value in specific situations. Now, the short version here is just having more than greenbacks available. So not having 100% of my life savings held in something that could be creatively inflated away in a relatively short period of time. So I mentioned the book's wild prophecy, and I think I also mentioned that it's very well considered. These past events that are used to make the case are real. Nothing seems to be exaggerated, and you can follow the course of cause and effect for each of those generations. It just makes sense. So I'd even recommend reading the book if you have the time. It's just some light reading about an upcoming generational crisis. But if you stick with it, the next turning is the high. The idea is that things do get better. 
So I'm not coming at you here as a young, impressionable guy, somebody caught up in a prophecy from an interesting book. The idea of some kind of significant crisis landing in our lifetime should at least be considered, though, 80-year pattern or not. So if the dollar does get into trouble, some of these backup plans that seem a little bit crazy in quiet times might actually flip to being the thing that makes sense when everything else is crazy. For me, my initial planning for gold was not earmarked for a generation-defining crisis. Maybe it's relevant that I started in 2008. That would have been one of the turnings in the book. That would have been the start of the unraveling. But my thoughts were pretty simple. Just get three months of expenses in gold, just in case. Well, once I had that put away, I started putting some aside slowly. So the idea was double that and then double it again. I didn't run out and burn through all of my available savings to do that. I wasn't cutting out plan A so that I would have this plan B. It was just buy a quarter ounce of gold every month because that's what I could afford without stealing from the other pocket. As far as planning goes, I still like that idea, but if I was starting today, I'm not sure that it would be the same thing. I don't know if I would start with three ounces of gold and then a quarter ounce of gold every month, but that's part of what I'm saying here too. Everyone's going to be different. The important part is just considering having both a plan A and a plan B. Now, if you lay that over the ideas in the book, if hyperinflation were to tear off from some kind of crisis and dollars were meaningfully reduced in value, well, my retirement years would look a lot different than the image of my head. So gold is meant to give a little bit of a life raft for something like that. Or not, it could simply be something that I've been able to save up in the background and never really need in a major way. That would be great. Bitcoin could turn out to be a really weird gamble. Silver could end up being a bit of a waste of space. And these gold backs could be a waste of money. Who knows? It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. I think what Miyamoto Masashi was getting at there is know how to use a sword and don't keep all your money in dollar bills. So let's call it good there. I'll leave a link to the book in the description. I think it's worth your time. And I'm also curious about your plan B's and your plan C's. So let us know what you're up to. While you're in the comments, be sure to hit the like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more of the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.